Tom Fitton is the president of Judicial Watch. He has been one of those voices in Washington, D.C. since the beginning of the Spygate story, standing up and saying, hold on here. There's something very rotten that happened during the Obama administration. And, uh, Tom, you've used Judicial Watch and FOIA requests and shining the light and asking for transparency from the beginning. And now we learn that U.S. Attorney Durham out of Connecticut has uh, officially made this a criminal investigation. First of all, thanks for all of the great work you've done at Judicial Watch, Tom. And thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Larry. Uh, you know, we can't do it without our supporters. And we've got a great team of lawyers and investigators that are asking the questions the rest of this uh, decrepit city don't want to ask. So, first of all, what do you make of this announcement that it is a criminal investigation? This, of course, what, what do you think is the most important part of that, other than people might actually be seeking, seeing some, some jail time here? Uh, how large do you think that, that uh, grand jury ability is looming here? Well, it's a major development in the sense that we have official confirmation that uh, Justice Department officials, the U.S. Attorney for Connecticut, has looked at the origins of the investigation of uh, President Trump, then candidate Trump, and have concluded there's enough information to open a criminal investigation, meaning there's evidence that there were crimes committed in targeting President Trump. That's why the media doesn't want to talk about this, because it blows up, it blows out of the water the whole charade against him on both Russia and, frankly, it's kissing cousin Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, connect that dot for me, will you? Because I, the people are losing sight of that, even if you'll find maybe one or two honest journalists who now are saying, well, maybe there really was something there. Maybe maybe people, you know, cut corners there in Comey's FBI or in Brennan's CIA. Their hearts were in the right place, but maybe they violated some laws. They're still not seeing the connection to this this phony Ukraine impeachment story. Well, of course, Ukraine is tied to this issue as well because they were helping generate some of the information, um, maybe some of the disinformation, to uh, uh, cause the Justice Department uh, to come up with reasons to investigate President Trump and people around him, specifically Manafort. They leaked uh, the infamous Black Ledger, which described financial transactions associated with Ukraine political spending, tied it to Americans. Uh, It it uh, put out uh, information saying that they didn't want President Trump to be president back when he was a candidate. And they were also coordinating with the DNC. And kind of that's part of the piece in terms of inappropriate coordinations with foreign nationals to impact our election campaigns. And so uh, everyone thought through all the Russia material was uh, laundered in many ways through these Ukrainian connections uh, that the Democrats were fostering. But on top of that, it just goes back to the beginning in the sense that you had, in my view, a manufactured intelligence targeting Trump or suggesting he was colluding with the Russians, just as you had a manufactured allegation, because we've seen what actually was said and what was done, that President Trump improperly was communicating with the Ukrainian president about investigating Joe Biden. Uh, it, it, It doesn't. You can see neither in neither case does the actual substantive went on warrant the response in the case of uh, Trump on Russia, uh, special counsel in the case of Ukraine uh, an impeachment. And what I find interesting, Tom Fitton, in in both of these stories is that there are a couple of characters um, that, that seem to keep popping up in the center of all of these things. And one of them is the congressman from Southern California who is now the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff. And, I mean, I spoke with Newt Gingrich earlier on the program. He said he wouldn't trust Adam Schiff with yesterday's news. Uh, He's a liar. He's a leaker. Why is he still the chairman, Tom Fitton, of such a sensitive committee, not to mention heading up this phony impeachment process? For the life of me, I don't know why Republicans don't focus on his lack of ethics and, and the fact that he can't be trusted to run the Intelligence Committee. We have two pending ethics complaints against him, one over the mishandling classified information where he improperly confirmed it. Secondly, his communications with uh, anti-Trump witnesses. And so, oh, we come across the come into the Ukraine issue and then you have the issue of his uh, taking potentially classified information from the so-called whistleblower lying about it. So you've got a twofer there, mishandling classified information and improper communications with a witness and lying about it. 
And so uh, ethical transgression after ethical transgression suggests to me he should not be the head of the Intelligence Committee and that the president should cut him off from any classified information. By the way, his counterpart on that committee, the ranking member now, he calls himself chairman in exile, Devin Nunes, also from California, uh, the Central Valley. I actually I interviewed him over the weekend. We're going to play excerpts of that interview uh, uh, later. He's, I asked him point blank, Tom Fitton. I said, why did the FBI interview Lieutenant General Mike Flynn when, uh, about his phone conversation with the Russian ambassador when they already had the transcript of that phone conversation? There was nothing to interview Mike Flynn about. And without hesitating, Devin Nunes says, because they were setting him up. Uh, first of all, is that your reading of the situation? And second of all, will that be part, do you believe, of this, of this all-encompassing criminal investigation? Well, it ought to be. Uh, and if it isn't, uh, the the president should intervene and just pardon Flynn outright. You had James Comey admit that uh, he went around the typical ways that you communicate with White House staffers, at least if you're the FBI wants to interview. Uh, he took advantage of the fact it was a new administration, and he broke the rules to get the Flynn interview. They lied about the nature of why they were coming in to talk to him about it, uh, and then it looks like they mischaracterized his responses. Uh, you see uh, his lawyer, Sidney Powell, raising all sorts of serious questions about prosecutorial misconduct. Look, either Judge Sullivan should uh, throw out the case, initiate his own investigation, uh, Attorney General Barr can step in and freeze the case, or as I point out, uh, the uh, President of the United States can pardon Flynn, which would cut it all short. And, and ultimately, ultimately, as this uh, moves forward, I think that when the American people learn these facts, Tom Fitton, uh, the facts are out there, by the way, uh, if they're if they're just interested in looking at them. But the reason that they don't have them is because of the media. The media still refuses to cover this part of the story. Is it because of bias or is it actually because the media recognizes they're going to be implicated in some of this? The media was part of this story, were they not? Oh, they were co-conspirators. Uh, we're talking about Ukraine. Uh, we had the Associated Press, new documents we just uncovered last week show that the Associated Press reached out and were talking to Andrew Weissman at the Justice Department in 2017, just before Weissman joined Mueller's operation. And they were came to that to the Justice Department with information on Manafort trying to get him prosecuted. They gave him the code they gave the FBI and the Justice Department the code to Manafort's private storage locker where they thought he might have financial records. Wait, the, now let's uh, pause for a second. These are reporters at the Associated Press, basically These are feeding? Yeah, that's right. We have the FBI report on the meeting. They showed up. They had information on Ukraine. Of course, only on Manafort. None of the Democrats that were involved with Manafort on Ukraine right. representations. Uh, and uh, they um, were pushing, well, can he be prosecuted under the Foreign Agents Registration Act? Can he be prosecuted for false statements? <laughs> but this, this was advocacy trying to get the man prosecuted. All right, and Weissman, in return, asked the AP, hey, go back to Cyprus, supposedly where there was some money laundering by Manafort, and ask them to make sure that they gave us all the documents they could have given us. Jeez. Did they depu- what, they, what did he deputize them <laughs> as Justice yeah, Department exactly. investigators? Little de- deputies of the AP by Andrew Weissman, the anti-Trumper um, at the Justice yeah. Department. The, uh, the media is not just complicit in this. They're actually active participants, uh, many members of the media. And, boy, that needs to come out as well. Tom Fitton, we got to leave it there. But the reason half of this stuff has come out is because of the great work of J- uh, Judicial Watch. Keep up the great work as president there, Tom, and hopefully you'll get much support. Thank you. You bet. That's Tom Fitton.